Well, it must be said, it's a good swimmer, isn't it? Look at that. Descending underwater. Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here. Welcome back to the railway and today I have some very serious and very bad news for you. <laughs> Smiling, are they? Well, they obviously have no idea what's about to happen. And just in case you have no idea what's about to happen either, if you cast your mind back quite a few months ago now, I made a video where I proved that this 040 could actually work under the water. And it was in that video that I made a fateful promise that come summertime, I was going to buy a paddling pool and set up a proper layout of track, a proper circuit of track in the paddling pool and try a loco underneath the water. Well, Summertime's here and I've had to fulfill my promise. So I bought this paddling pool on Amazon and I'm going to do just that. We're going to set it up in the garden and I'm going to try and run a loco in it. Now, I'm not going to unbox this, obviously, because that would be ludicrous. Yes, I am. Of course it would. And that's why we do it. We like ludicrous things. So very quickly, let's get this out. So yeah, this was very cheap. I think it cost me about 17 pounds on Amazon and who knows, I might deliberately burst it when I've finished with it because I think that would bring a degree of vindictive joy to us all, wouldn't it? Uh, so let's see what it's like. I'm hoping it is actually going to inflate and work as a pool. Uh, as I say, because it was so cheap, I, I am concerned. So it's probably wise that I'm getting this out beforehand, just to double check. So yes, I've always wanted to say I've genuinely unboxed a paddling pool on my model railway channel. So. Yeah, let's do it. Hmm. Don't know what that was. Not overly bothered, really. So, oh, it stinks. I suppose rubber things always do. Um, well, I don't know what I was expecting, but it is indeed a paddling pool. Yep, that looks all right. There's a huge booklet. Oh, it stinks. I'm not normally offended by horrendous smells, but it smells like something's died in it. I don't know. Oh, my word. Yeah, this is silly. It's a paddling pool. There can't be this much to say. Let's get it into the garden. I'm going to blow this up with my lungs and certainly not a compressor or a foot pump. No, no, no. And uh, let's do this thing. Let's find out what happens. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I'm going to be trying my favourite loco in it as well. Wouldn't like to see anything happen to it, would you? Oh, no. So I have built what I consider to be a very lovely layout, which is a very overexposed layout. Let me just take care of that. Uh, so there we go. Hope you enjoyed that. That's the end of the video. What's that? I've forgotten a very important ingredient. Yes, we need to fill this with water. So I reckon there's a, an awful lot, let's say, that could go wrong with this. Um, obviously the Helgen Tango, as we know, is not such a good quality loco as the Hornby 040 was, so it might just fail straight away as soon as water goes anywhere near it. The wagons, we've never had wagons underwater before, they might just float away. There's a whole number of other things that could go wrong. The track, for example, isn't very flat, so that might be a huge problem. So, I honestly don't know what's going to happen. I'm not sort of promising that this is going to work. I'm going to speed the loco up a bit before we try it, I think. Uh, even now, I don't think it's on the track properly, but it just keeps coming off because it's not level. But uh, it's working, as you can see. Um, if the water resistance gets high, um, obviously the loco might stop. I mean, it's struggling now. Um, blimey, it's struggling with five wagons. That's crazy. Either way, I will go and get the hose <laughs> and we'll see what happens, shall we? Okay, so the hose is in position. The only thing to do now is to start up the engine. So let's do that. And now, all I've got to do is turn on the hose. So, prepare for the last tango in, uh, I don't know where I'm going with that, Sam Strains, there we go. Right, okay folks, we've started with a, just a small trickle to start with. So place your bets, what's gonna to fail to start with? Are the wagons gonna float away? Is the loco just gonna stop dead? Goodness only knows. The hose is making strange flatulent noises. I think it's even cut off, which is interesting. Fair enough. I'm sure it'll be back on again in a second. Well, the track's almost underwater now at the lowest section. Obviously, we're not flat here, so that's the problem. But within a couple more laps, the track, at least there, 
should be way underneath the water. Yeah, it is. So the Tango's wheels are now wet. Oh goodness. Well, I did promise folks that this Tango would meet a sticky end, but not necessarily a watery grave. So this is definitely a turn up, isn't it? Of course, it's still completely dry on this end, but for how long, I don't know. <laughs> So I think it's probably safe to assume that the track is all pretty slippery now with water. So how that's going to affect the pulling power, well, obviously we can guess. Should be interesting, very much so. Right, time to fill the pool a bit more. Oh, hello, there's my shadow. Right, let's turn this down a bit. Right, yeah, fill up the pool a bit faster then, shall we, before it kills the loco. Unfortunately, I haven't brought any apparatus with me to measure the uh, current and things, although I did just get a tingle through the water. <laughs> ah, look, the wagons. The wagons have disconnected. Yep, unfortunately I think that's the end of the wagons. Well, I could fill them up with water, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. OK, let's try that again, shall we? Crikey, what on earth am I doing? It's actually having to haul them out of the water there, look. The wagons are full of water. <laughs> Let's keep following it. Oops, the tree's in the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep, that's underwater, all right. With <laughs> bubbles coming out of the chimney for comic effects, I like that. does this lap, that is an entire lap completed entirely underwater. There we are. So it's a success, I'm amazed. Didn't think it would be, and we have got coasters floating in the water now, which is not great. I would say I'll go in there with it, but yeah, I don't really want to share a pool with the, such a horrible loco. Might if it was a Hornby engine, I guess. Let's just grab this. Yes, well, it's not happy, is it? That's for sure. It's not happy at all, but it's it's working. So there you have it, folks. That is the end of that. Yes, it works. I don't expect I'll be doing it again, so definitely make the most of it. And thanks for watching. Let me know, did you think it was going to work? And do you reckon the Tango will ever work again out of water? Well, that's going to be the question, but we'll find that out another day, I think. All right, folks, thank you for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. So before I finish, here's something really interesting for you. Look at the state of this piece of track. This rail looks almost completely clean, but this one is green, black, completely, completely filthy. And the Loco did about perhaps 20 minutes underwater. And it's not just the power track. Uh, there's another piece, as you can see, that is completely black and filthy. And it's, it's sort of gone on my hands as well. You probably can't see it too well, but... Yeah, it's gone on my hands. Uh, so some serious electrolysis has happened there. But obviously 20 minutes is quite similar to the amount of time I did this before in the loft. The only difference being that then I used uh, a straight DC supply and this time I was using one of the cheap Hornby train set controllers which I think is a PWM. So obviously the pulsing through the water or through the tracks uh, conducts through the water a lot better than just straight DC does. But that's very interesting, yes. And the loco wheels look fine by the way. I can't really see a great deal of guff on the loco wheels although actually thinking about it i will show you you can definitely see a lot of green on the uh, well on the left hand side rails let me show you yeah right so i don't know how obvious this is but uh, on camera well well in the real life these wheels here look much much greener than these ones here and the same goes with the tender wheels so it is interesting very very interesting in fact i'm amazed that it ran as long as it did in that state